Mm. I remember I always say, Lord, you say, by your stripes, I am healed. Amen. I said, now, Lord, I need a heal. And I said, because I want to have sex. <laughs> I said, I said Man, Lord. Girl, you're just a freak. You're just, I everybody said, comes no. back to sex. I was you just like, want to have Lord, sex all the time. I wanted to. I said, Lord, I said, this man is so fine and sexy and I need some. And I kept thinking in my mind that maybe if he can just get it in me, you know, and I done had surgery and stuff, you know, I could pop up out of this. Because sometimes... <laughs> I'm serious. You talk about sexual healing no, on a different let level, me huh? Let me Marvin Gaye, huh? The pain would be so severe. I used to tell him, I said, babe, come on, let's go do it. Because I need this pain up out of here. Mm -hmm. so, so he'll be, okay, honey. Look, the children be outside playing on their rooms, but we get it through. Because, I mean, it really <laughs> Sexual healing. I need it. <laughs> and it helped too. It, yeah. it helped. It helped a lot still to this day. Mm -hmm. still still helped. And I still, I, mm -hmm. you know, endometriosis, you never get rid of yeah. it. And there's a lot of pain. I'd be like, oh, I need it. Every second that escapes without you here with me keeps my heart anticipating till I finally see you. When I made my vows, I told God that I was going to take care of this gift. All my life I've been waiting for you. Girl, you know I've been praying for you. Been writing these love letters to you. So I fight for that future in the present. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That was good, Congratulations to the ones who found love. For the whole band, new beginnings from heaven above. I await my future wifey. I pray that it won't be too long. Too long. Every second that it. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm your host, Latera Sar Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Lit Fam, we are about to launch the Lit Fam community. Uh, make sure that you hit that link in the description so you can join the mailing list so you'll be notified when we launch it. It's going to be an amazing experience. You'll get a chance to see uh, behind the scene footage. Um, like just 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 check your email you're going to be finding out about a lot of stuff well today's guests i'm so excited about them let me tell you something i've been watching them on instagram they're always going viral on TikTok. uh some of my favorite sites have reposted their content listen without further ado welcome to the dear future wifey podcast my new homies theo and Riri Smith. No, I'm Bad Girl Riri 504. Oh, oh, so I should call you Bad Girl Riri? Yeah. Bad Girl Riri 504? That's me. So, 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 ma'am, you know, I just want to show respect to my elder, so I can't, I, you mm -hmm. don't want me to call you Miss Rita? Nah. Call you Bad Girl Riri? That's it. Okay, well, Bad Girl Riri, Riri it is. Listen, man, how y'all doing? We're great, doing great. Great, great. Man, uh, Theo, <laughs> it looks like you've been loving this woman well. Hmm. Uh, she has, since she's walked through this door, she's been beaming. Um, a lot of times you find couples that on social media, they appear a certain way and then you meet them face to face and they don't have two words to share with each other. But y'all's love is authentic. Mm -hmm. Y'all love is real. Um, what made you, let's go back. Come on. Y'all just celebrate. When this episode drops, y'all would have celebrated y'all's 43rd anniversary on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that that, makes, me you, that makes you excited, Bad Girl Riri. Me shout. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> when you when you hear yes. that, why does it make you want to shout? I, I really feel like a newlywed. I just get so excited. You know, I'm excited for yes. love. I love love. I yeah. love being in love. Period. So you're still in love to this very day? Oh, yes. That's right. Really? Very much. Very much. Mm -hmm. Very much. Ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. Ain't going nowhere. So so, so answer this. Let's go all the way back. So people want to know how did y'all meet? You know, a lot of women that watch the podcast, these dating streets look a whole lot different than they did 43 <laughs> years ago. You know, uh, and so they want to see how did y'all find this love and how has it lasted 43 years, almost oh half a, a half a century. Mm. Can you think about that? Almost half a century. Mm. So mm. when you look at that, how did you meet Theo? How, how, how did you meet this? I'm going to say Bad Girl Riri. Well, I met Bad Girl Riri. 
Yeah, I'm on the island. Well, I've, I've been to a lot of relationships, maybe about three before I met her. <laughs> He's a lot. He's but, at, three. but at the time, I, would, I wasn't a Christian at the time, but the oh. last one I had, I said, I prayed. I said, Lord, the next woman I meet, mm. I want to marry her. Mm. How old were you during that time? I was 17. How are you going to say you've been through a lot of relationships? What well, a relationship don't count? You talking about? Oh, they don't count. They don't count. You're talking about three when I was they 17. So you met her that young? Uh, oh, I was 14 and a half. Yeah. Oh, okay. So y'all met way back then. Okay, let's yeah. unpack this. So you said the next relationship I get in, you mm -hmm. wanted what? For it to be your wife? Wanted to be my wife. Right. At 17 years old, you thought about marriage. That's right. That's right. Look at my That's man. Right. Go ahead, big. That's right. Do Why? Where'd that come from? Well, you know, I, I just felt that this is what I needed, you know. I mean, when I look back now, I didn't know it then. You know, the Bible says it's not good that man should be alone. Hmm. He he made him a help me, somebody yeah. that's suitable for him, that could fit him. Yes. So that was my goal, you know, to, to find that woman that would suit me. But little did I know. God gave me more than I can even imagine on, when I met when I met her. Ooh. So what was about her? So she, you said she was 14. Mm -hmm. And so when did you meet her and how did y'all meet? Well, we lived in the same neighborhood and, you know, I knew of her and I knew her the way she carried herself. She carried herself as a young woman, you know. Now, other dates that I had, that wasn't marriage material, you know. A man is not, a man is looking for a gym. A goal, somebody he could present before his partners. Yeah. This my woman. Yeah. Come on. This now. my woman that gonna stand by my side. Yeah. Mm. That's what a man wants. Yeah. He wants somebody to represent him. Yeah. The woman Absolutely. is the glory of the man. Come Woo. on now. Come on, I'll make The woman shout. is the glory of the man. You better preach. I'm yeah, he, that's my glory, right? Yeah. Here. This is my crown. Yeah. Amen. This is what I present. Before people, I'm not ashamed to introduce my wife to nobody. Talk about it. I, I always tell them, you got to meet my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm proud of her. Yeah. I'm proud of her for what she have accomplished and where she came from. She made me and I helped her a better man than what I am today. Come on, Jesus. Because I came from a family where I didn't have a daddy. It was just my mom had 10 children. So I say, when I get married... I already knew this is ain't what I want. I want my wife. My I, ha, I already had a dream. Like I want my wife to be at home, mm -hmm. take care of the kids, to see about these children. Mm -hmm. Right. I go to work. Yeah. You know, I go Absolutely. to work. And she have helped me in every way. She took care of the household, made everything right, and she helped me create a business. Well, let me ask you this. Let's back up. So you met her, you were 17, and she was 14 and a half. Right. So, Rita, tell me how y'all met. Um, well, we'd be walking up and down the street because we stayed down the same street, right? And so one day he just asked me for my phone number, right? <laughs> and I gave it to him. Mm -hmm. Usually, if a boy asks me for my phone number... You give him the eye. They already know. <laughs> but I didn't do that. <laughs> that day, I really didn't do it. But see, look... I would always see him. He would be dressed to kill. So you was always dressing like you do right now? Dressed to kill. <laughs> I, I mean, fine. He had a sexy walk. He still do, though. He still got mm -hmm. that swing. <laughs> and so I was just looking at that. I said, ooh, he is so fine. You know, to myself, you know, but I never would tell him. I said, ooh, but he's so fine. I never thought he'd ask for my number, though. And he did. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And so... Y'all started dating seriously at that young age. Mm -hmm. I was about to make 15. My mom already said, you can have a boyfriend when you make 15. But the good thing about it, my mom knew his mom. Okay. So, yeah, but, like, you know how some people, they go all over the world. I couldn't go to a lot of things because my mom was strict. Yeah. But the little things that I could go to, we did. But he, he would come over every day. Every day after school. Mm -hmm. And my little heart be pounding. <laughs> 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 so y'all went to did y'all go to prom together and we all did. this stuff? We did. we did. And then so then like when did y'all go from what people will consider puppy love to like this is a real thing? Like this is this is the person I want to marry him. At what age did you actually uh propose to her? Ooh, 
Do you want me to talk about it? Yeah, I want well, to. Well, let me just say this. What happened? Or do you want to tell them? Baby? Good, babe. Well, this is really what happened. Okay. We had got a son. He had gave me a baby. Okay. We was experimenting. We got a baby, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all was experimenting. Experimenting. <laughs> on experiment. <laughs> and so when we got that baby, when I got pregnant, I got depressed, right? I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus Christ, what I'm going to do now? Yeah. So um, I'm going to tell you what happened. I became a Christian first. I'm going to tell you how we got together. Mm -hmm. I gave the Lord my life because I used to be a mess. I mean a mess, y'all. Be cussing and cutting up, right? (laughs) (laughs) Ready to fight. I don't care who it was. I'm serious. And so I didn't mess with people, but don't come for me. You talking about in high school you was like that? All my life. All Mm -hmm. All your life you used to fight. No, I'm this person. I'm to myself. But if you come for me, you, you, you gon' you gon' you gonna get it. Yeah, that's how it was. Yeah. So w- during that time, I started going to a home Bible study. Lord knows I needed to go because I needed to change, you know, with this baby and stuff. And then He started going to a home Bible study with me. So listen to this. On different times, I gave the Lord my life seriously, and then He gave the Lord His life. He called me and told me about it. And I kid y'all not. It's like God just worked in the world when we didn't like get engaged. We didn't propose. Mm-mm. Well, he came to me. He said, well, we need a ring. I said, no, we don't. I said, we're going to use this promise ring and this baby. We already engaged. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> so we don't need all that other stuff. And I'm serious. And we got married in my parents' home. Right. And I'm going to tell y'all something. God is so good because God came through like them rivers of living water. I mean, that's how it happened. So how old were y'all? So how old were you then? I was 19. So you were 19? 21. You were 21. Mm-hmm. And so you got pregnant. How old was the child during that time? He was two months when we got married. Two months. Mm-hmm. So when you got pregnant, did mom, did you grow up with mom and dad in the household? Yes, I did. And it wasn't nothing nice. Trust I want me. to know. What did they say Ooh, to you? Oh, Lord. My daddy was, well, my daddy, my daddy loved me to pieces. He was hurt, but he never expressed it at the time. My mama, oh, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it was embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it's not something that you want for yep. your daughter. But the thing about it is that. I walked around being shamed, too. I was like, Lord, have mercy. What have I done? You yeah. know, like, I didn't want this to happen, but that's what happened. That's yeah. what you do. You do <laughs> that's what, you that's what happens when you're experimenting? Yeah, when you're experimenting. <laughs> but let me tell you, I would say what was a bad situation God took it and magnified that thing. I'm telling y'all. That's and what God gave does. Us, I'm, I'm telling y'all, like, we would be in Bible study with our son. We would pray together. Good. We would read our Bible together. And we still like that. Good. And it just grew us. It just grew us. And it grew us. And look, whew, Lord Jesus, he He really blessed us. Theo, mm. so during that time, <laughs> dad didn't pull you aside and be like, you better marry my daughter. You got her pregnant. He never came at you like that? No, he never came at me like that. I I just knew this was with my wife. You know, um, we went to counseling. Yes, we did. And good. You know, that was the counselor back then. Yeah, yes, we did. Because the, the minister, he didn't want us to get married because he felt we was too young. Yep. But we went forward. I was like, I don't know we, what he's talking we about. We went forward because you know. <laughs> Yeah. We had a child together. Yes. Yeah. And I knew this was my wife. Ain't no sense in me looking nowhere else. Good. You know? And um we went from there. And so when y'all got married, um, you said you were about twenty one, you're about nineteen ish. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so when you looked at that journey, of course, neither one of y'all knew what it took no. to mm-hmm. <laughs> be a mm-hmm. married couple. No. Did y'all have y'all own place or were y'all still staying? Did y'all end up moving in with one of y'all's parents? Uh, how'd that go? Well, we were waiting for our apartment to get ready. So it was like we stayed there for, what, a week or something like that? And then we had our own apartment. We was waiting for it. But we still mm-hmm. got married. And we yeah. went by his mother. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so how was those early years as a married couple trying to just figure out not only who you are at this point, Y'all have a child that y'all raising and trying to live this uh, this life together in holy matrimony. What did those early years look like? Sex every day. <laughs> I'm not lying. <laughs> Seven days a week, right? <laughs> I mean, we were young. <laughs> and at the time, I ain't have a chandelier, right? <laughs> but... <laughs> she and, said, all I remember, sex every day. That's what did, we did. We did. And... We did. and you know, even though we had counseling, I'm gonna be honest with you. It went in one ear and went out the other because all I was worrying about having sex. That was it. That was it. That was and it. how many kids did y'all have in the first couple of years? 
Oh Lord, they came boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> and then it took a little time for my little girl to come. <laughs> the little baby girl over there. Yeah, it took a little time for my little baby girl to come. But it was, I couldn't believe I had got pregnant with the, when my oldest one was 11 months. I said, now look at this. <laughs> and I had already said, I ain't having no more babies. But that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> As y'all were going through this marriage, 43 years, I know y'all have experienced a whole lot. Yes, um, Lord. When you think about these 43 years, I see when I, every time I say that, you want to go into a shout. Um, you be thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. you know. But when you look at those times, were there ever times early on or a period where y'all wanted to call it quits? Oh, oh no, no, I never, no, I, never I, that, no, never indeed, that, no, no. Y'all never had moments never, where y'all never, never, no, no. Now no, let me just say no. this: I had got sick, right, and um, I was really, really sick. Um, now think about it. my last baby at twenty three. Then I got sick, really sick, unto death almost, and. He took care of me, brought me to every specialist he could bring me to, trying to get me well. He took care of me. I might, I might cry because it's the real thing. Mm-hmm. He took care of me. He didn't. Mm-hmm. Our parents live right mm-hmm. down the street from each other. He didn't call either one of them. He took care of me. Mm-hmm. You know, did my breakfast before he go to work. I mean, I was a mess, y'all. I looked a mess, and I mean, just sick. And I was trying to get him somebody. Really? Yeah, because I feel like if I die, he need a good wife. I had somebody in mind. And then my three babies, you know, that I have, you know, they need a good mother. So you really thought you was about to go? You oh, about to check out of here? I was really that sick. Mm-hmm. I was really sick. And um, let me tell you, it was bad. And so that, during that time, all that time that I was sick, he never left me. Mm-hmm. You know, and statistically, men leave the women when they sick time. like that, mm, yep. you know, I was sick, but I still wore that laundry. You did? What? <laughs> I was sick, but let me tell you, I still was sexy up until that almost. Really? Really. Because he always bought me like really beautiful laundry. And just to put some on meant the world to me. Mm-hmm. Although I was like this. <laughs> I, I'm so, I was sick, you know, and so did you know she was trying to find uh, find a replacement for herself? Did no, she I tell never you that? told him. Mm-mm. I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him till later on. Did, did you tell the woman? No, I was gonna set her up. But I was gonna tell her. <laughs> so I was, you, oh, I was so, gonna tell her. So you had it planned. You you really had it one planned. of my friends I, that I really really like, and I knew she was a clean woman because cleanliness is important to him, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I knew she was smart too, yeah, because I'm smart. So I you, I watch her, you know, and so I say, oh, she the person for him. Oh, but when I told him, he was like, honey. <laughs> <laughs> But he kept praying for me, though. He wanted me, he said, I wanted to give up. He said, now, sweetheart, no. You're not giving up, honey. Mm-hmm. You know, I was really, because, I mean, this man was used to having sex. We was used yeah. to just doing it and living our lives and living yeah. good, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I felt so sorry for him. I said, I know he wants something yet, but I can't give nothing. Yeah. Couldn't do a thing. You know what I'm saying? That's when you know what you but, know what you know. But, yeah, you about to say but, it, but it's amazing how, even though during that time, God kept me. Oh, it's like, him. you know, he didn't let me wander, like, thinking about another woman. It, it's amazing and difficult. to. I don't know how I can explain it. Mm. But when you're in love with somebody. Mm. Don't make me cry. You know, yeah. you're going to make me cry. Oh, Jesus. You're going to make you cry, <laughs> Go ahead, baby. That's all right. That's okay. Keep talking, King. You can cry. Here. You can cry. It, it makes you cry, though. That's the kind of love that makes you just, whoo. I'm going to say it like this here. God's grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It is. Take your time, B. You said God kept you. He didn't cause you to wander away, which is so important because I'm glad that bad girl Riri said that She's aware that most men leave. If you known how many DMs I've gotten from women whose spouses left them when they got a cancer diagnosis, left them in the hospital while they're getting chemo treatments, left mm-hmm, them, mm-hmm. and just they they. I mean, leap. I have a lady. I'm gonna drop this episode soon. But I had the, a lady in uh, Bermuda who was blind. She started losing her sight. Had five kids. Husband left her after she lost the sight. My mm. Lord. I don't know what kind of heart you have to have mm. to leave mm. your wife after she lost her sight 
she's a hundred percent blind with five kids and no job because she was a stay at home uh, wife and you leave. Mm. But the reason why I have to salute you, King, is not only did you stay 10 toes down loving on your wife, but then you were faithful. Yes. Not too many times do we hear men operating in faithfulness. And not so many times do we hear a woman that says, listen, I know my man needs some. We was having sex all this time. I felt guilty that I wasn't able to uh, fulfill his needs mm -hmm. as a woman, mm -hmm. but he mm -hmm. never made me feel less than. Mm -hmm. Never. He mm -hmm. kept loving me in spite of. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being an example. Thank you for being what the Bible calls a mighty man of valor. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you for giving reference to what, how kings are supposed to conduct themselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Riri, mm -hmm. how did you pull through that? What happened? Well, I finally got the surgery. We did a lot of praying, though. I mean, because I was in a lot of pain. The first time, I was 26, and they did half of the surgery. I was bleeding too much. I had endometriosis. Okay. But then at 27 and a half, it came back like with endometrial cancer in my stomach. So I was just suffering, suffering, suffering. And um, finally had a second um, surgery. Felt like I was losing my mind. And he did a lot of praying for me. We, I'm telling you, he did a lot of praying for me. And I, just, I would feel so bad because it's like we have three kids. He have to go to work because I didn't work. He didn't want me to work. And it was like, oh, my God, I, whoever thought this would happen, you know? I tell people like this, I have to say this, when you get married, you know, I mean, I was all fine and sexy before I got married, you know, he, he found me. And then your hair all over your head because you can't go to the beauty parlor. Um, you know, you just look a mess, you feel a mess. But he never made me felt like I was a mess. I felt a mess. He never made me feel, feel degraded. So how we got through it, prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer and prayer. And he would, you know, we always hold hands. Even to this day, we hold hands in bed and we pray. Even to this day, 43 blessed years almost, we still hold hands and pray. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And God came through. And I'm telling you, he came through like them rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. I remember I always say, Lord, you say, by your stripes, I am healed. Amen. I say, now, Lord, I need a healing. I say, because I want to have sex. <laughs> I say, I say Man, Lord. Girl, you're just a freak. You're just, I everybody said, come Lord. back to sex. I was you just like, want to have Lord, sex all the time. I wanted to. I say, Lord, I say, this man is so fine and sexy, and I need some. And I kept thinking in my mind, and maybe if he can just get it in me, you know, and I done had surgery and stuff, you know, I could pop up out of this. Because sometimes... <laughs> I'm serious. You talk about sexual healing no, on a different level, huh? Let me tell you, the pain would be so severe. I used to tell him, I said, babe, come on, let's go do it. Because I need this pain up out of here. Mm -hmm. so, so he'll be, okay, honey. Look, the children will be outside playing on their runs, but we get it through. Because, I mean, it really <laughs> I need sexual healing. I need it. <laughs> and it helped too. It, yeah. it helped. It helped a lot still mm. to this day. Mm -hmm. It still, still helped. And I still, I, mm. you know, endometriosis, you never get rid of it. Yeah. And there's a lot of pain. I'd be like, oh, I need it. That's what mm. it is. Ugh. Yep. Mm -hmm. What did you think about that, uh, going through that, going through this with her? Oftentimes, we don't get a chance to hear the man story. So what were you thinking? Unpack that, King. What were you going through watching your... Because men were fixers, right? Mm -hmm. We wish that we can just fix everything. But here she right. is going through something that you you have no control over. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I like to not say no control over because you have the power of prayer, which mm -hmm. you did. But from a physical standpoint, by your own might, there's nothing you can do about that. How did you navigate that space? Well, like she said... Mostly we just prayed, you know. It's it's just the grace of God. We prayed, you know, kept praying a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And the Lord seen us through it, you know. But how did you what were you thinking during that moment? Take me back to those days where well, you're seeing the woman that you love suffer. Well, I was thinking she wasn't gonna make it, but at the same time I was trusting God, you know. Seeing her deteriorated, you know, it hurted me, you know. Mm -hmm. But I had to be strong, you know, to to help her pull through it too, you know. 
what were the, your kids going? What were your kids thinking during this time? Did they did they understand the severity of what was going on? I played it good. Let me tell you mm-hmm. what I did. They didn't know. <laughs> like my kids really didn't know because I would have my bad moments. Like when they were outside, I would just go in the closet screaming and hollering and crying for real. It was just that bad. But the way I did it, they knew I was laying down mm-hmm. and stuff because she would always come and get my baby. Yeah, she would always come get my. Go baby. and say her name. Tamika, that's my girl there. <laughs> but my little girl would come get in the bed with me. She was very, very silent, but very smart. And she would just observe. She knew I was sick. But the way I did it, I didn't do it in a way where my children couldn't enjoy their lives. Mm. I wanted them to enjoy their lives. So when they come around, I'm looking, yeah, like I'm You're all faking. there. Yeah, well, I was. Yeah. But she, she knew I was. She, she knew I was fake, and them boys don't catch on. <laughs> <laughs> she she knew, mm-hmm. you know. But them boys, they didn't catch on. What would she just, say? She just she just know. She just smart like that. She was, I mean, like she was a little girl, and um, like what age? I would say she was between the ages five, six, seven, and eight. Yeah, I remember when they took me in the ambulance. She was two. I never forget it. And she was asking my mom. It's my mama coming back home. It's my mama coming back home, you know. And that just broke my mm. heart, you know, because I felt like I wasn't going to come back home, you know. So it was like I knew how to, I knew how to do it. If I go by the sofa, I didn't let them see me, uh, you know, with pain. I just put a wrap on me and just sit from the sofa to the bed. I couldn't do nothing. Mm. Nothing for myself. My little man had to bed me my bed. That's when, you know, somebody had the audacity to tell me, girl, you ain't had a seven-day itch, girl, if you don't get from around me, the seven-year itch. I'm like, girl, if you don't go play somewhere, how this man will took kill me. Bad you know girl, Riri, what you say? If you don't go play somewhere? You better go play somewhere. I don't care where you play at. I don't care who feel you go in, but you had better go play somewhere. Mm-hmm. How this man will bathe me and took care of me and make sure I have on cute lingerie and eating stuff because he know I love breakfast. Mm-hmm. Well, girl, you better go play somewhere. <laughs> was that somebody that hit you up on social media or was that just... No, it was a, a girl I went to school with and she saw me. She said, girl, you never had the seven-year itch. I said, girl, what you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Another man. I said, what man? So what it is, I did a TED talk about that. And so the seven-year itch is a real thing that most couples go mm-hmm. through uh, with any long, any decision that one makes, whether it's a home purchase, you'll find that they say typically around the seven year mark, you'll start regretting that decision. Mm-hmm. And so if you can overcome that, then that's where you can have a thriving marriage. But most marriages begin to suffer and fail and divorce begins to um, occur around the seven year mark. And so uh, it's interesting that she said that to you, but what was so great about it is that y'all fortified y'all marriage in the earlier years Mm -hmm. to where y'all lived out those vows Mm -hmm. through sickness and in health. Y'all lived that out. We lived it out. And so y'all built the bond. Yes, we did. She would have been accurate in the sense that most, like you just said, Mm -hmm. most men Mm -hmm. aren't able to weather that storm. That Mm -hmm. nurturing you and Mm -hmm. and trying to be a caretaker. Exactly. He's like, I ain't got time for this. And he'll just just leave. Mm -hmm. And so I love the testimony that y'all have that y'all were able to weather through those tumultuous mm-hmm. times mm-hmm. um and so that was around what year of y'all's marriage where the because it was like see. you said it was a couple of surgeries throughout mm-hmm. but the last surgery occurred when you were about what, what year? And a half. 27 mm-hmm. and so that's probably about y'all been married at that time for what about seven years let me see what's 23 24 25, about four years about four years about four years you see what point. i'm saying yeah mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> y'all been through some stuff <laughs> y'all been through some yeah. stuff yeah. Early. Early. early early and who would have known that was gonna happen right. that's this is what people ask me all the time how do i know he for me shoot <laughs> baby if i don't know nothing about nothing cut, shame on me <laughs> somebody need to come and uh, me up. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know, they'll, they'll ask me questions like that. Like, how, you know, are you crazy? Yeah. But they don't you know? know the story, though. They don't mm-hmm. know the story. But still, when you've been with somebody for 43 years, I don't walk around like the woman that, you know, been under the well. You yeah. know, yeah. I, I'm still All a happy and, woman. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm even when I was sick, it, you know, I still was happy because we together. Mm-hmm. We're doing this together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But haven't you seen the opposite? Haven't you seen couples that been together for 20, 30, 40 years and they're miserable? 
Oh, I've seen it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what oh, I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. And I don't be nowhere around it. <laughs> nowhere around it. Because <laughs> they try to come for me. Like, yeah, like, well, girl, why you, girl, I can't believe you stayed with him. Like, oh, what the heck you talking about? I don't have no reason to leave. Now, what's your problem? <laughs> don't come talking over here. What'd you, you say? Know? You, have, you, you right. know, they be saying things like, girl, you still with him? No, you want it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you want it, but you're not getting him. <laughs> Is that how you be coming for a bad girl, really? <laughs> That's how they come for me. They come uh-huh. for me. They act you like they'll see me in the street. Girl, I can't believe you still with that. I'm like, I see you not with yours. Isn't that crazy how people... It is. This is, this is the most negative, stupid it stuff. Is. Like, why would you ever say that when I'm happy? It's not like I'm in this abusive relationship. Exactly. I'm in something that's happy. Wouldn't you want that for somebody? People yeah. always try to look at your past and try to make it out your future. No, you a lie. Because, baby, you see, when I come out here, I have them silk pajamas on looking good. I don't care if I'm at the front door to the back. I'm always smelling good, looking good. This man keeps me together. Mm-hmm. So when you coming at me, girl, you still with that or who you with? <laughs> I said, where well, your man? I said, are you dating anyone? Don't play with me. <laughs> I do. I said, don't play with me. Theo, did any guys ever come to you with that stuff? Well, no, nah. but I don't get you know guys. They kind of you know, yeah. They, you know, most of women do that. But yeah, but me, I, I haven't had a guy face me with nothing like that. They just oh, let me say it. something, Pastor. Mm. <laughs> a couple of guys was like, "Man, um, your wife don't work." I said, "Wait, hold on, babe. Let me get this one." I said, you still at home, and I'm gonna be at home. Don't I, don't come over here because you want your wife jumping here and jumping in. I ain't jumping. He jumping <laughs> for me. <laughs> No, we just don't come over here with that mess. <laughs> don't don't even bring in here the audacity of you to ask a question. You want me to answer you, and I will answer. So that's why they call you bad girl. Oh, really? I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I don't accept stuff like that well. Because <laughs> I'm a good wife. I homeschool my kids. You homeschool, you, sure you homeschool all the kids? I homeschool mm-hmm. three kids. Mm-hmm. House decorated, beautiful, clean, right? They I didn't know how to goodness. cook good, but I did the best I could. But, you know, his mama was living at that time, so I didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> but, I mean, good sex. She, so, so was she living with y'all? No, down the street. Oh, so she was cooking you know, food for you? Yeah, she did. So this man getting all this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you have the audacity to try to give me a job? No, you get the, <laughs> you get the application. I'm going to fill it out for you. <laughs> That's what I used to tell him. <laughs> you trying to give me a job? She said you trying to give click. me a job. <laughs> Why was it important for her not to work? You and I had a conversation before we, uh, re, you know, push record on this. Why was it important for her to be a stay-at-home wife? Well, because my mom, you know, mm. I, we didn't have a father figure in the home. Single mother. She mm. worked at two, three jobs. Mm, mm, mm. And, you know, we had no discipline in our life. You know, we could run the street late at night. Yeah. And, you know, I said, I don't want this for my family, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. I want my kids to have a mother at home to raise them, to mm-hmm. rear them, to train them, you know. And that's one of the reasons why. Because I seen what my mother went through, you know, mm-hmm. and it wasn't a good situation. Right. You know? you know, I got it. Even me, I got involved in stuff I shouldn't have got involved in, you know. But I said, you know, as for my household, you know, Come I don't know about nobody else, you know. I can mm-hmm. only good. speak for mine. I don't want my wife, you know, going through that, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you had no problem with that, did you? Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so don't you be coming over trying to get me no job. Yeah, that's what I'm about. Look at them abs. I'm going to fill it out for you. <laughs> <laughs> so what do y'all think with this newfound fame that y'all have? Why do you think people gravitate? Let's go back to the f- very first video that y'all had go viral. What was that video? Oh, Lord, I don't know. The panties. Ooh. Don't wear this. I think when I first did the thing with don't um what to wear and what not to wear, <laughs> yeah, because you know like what gets me, they want to come to bed like they're in the army, <laughs> and I don't. T- they ask me questions and I tell them I say if you keep coming to bed like that, yeah, he gonna leave, yeah, he gonna cheat, and I don't blame him. <laughs> I said I don't believe in cheating. <laughs> I said but what is wrong with having the clitty cat out? <laughs> so I'm like. 
Because guess who turned me on to the crouchless penis? Who? Him. <laughs> <laughs> so I started selling them. I said, you know what? I told him, I said, go to my... Uh, <laughs> my website, the Kitty Wiggle Collection, and get you some. I say, let yourself breathe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I say, let that cutie breathe so that man can smell it. I don't care how he get it, <laughs> some kind of way, so he can know a cat up in here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he can enjoy that. No, they want to come with, girl, I'm just going to say, girl, I don't blame that man for leaving you. <laughs> so serious. Tamika, what do you think when you be hearing your parents talk like that? Mm-hmm. You just so used to it. <laughs> <laughs> to me, just she be like, to say. To me, just be like, well, that's my mom and dad. You know, I'm <laughs> Train up a child the way they should oh, go. Yes. Oh, yes. And when oh, she gets yes. old, she won't depart from it. Amen, somebody. <laughs> but it's important, you know, it's important, y'all. It is very important to role play. Try to. I'm so tired. I'm talking about, girl, I'm going to go in there with that T-shirt. Now, I sell T-shirts, right? And I named the morning after intimacy, right? <laughs> because the morning after intimacy, that man be having my hair everywhere. Just, just everywhere. And then he then look, he hurt me get me to the hairstylist. But it be everywhere. So I said, you know what? I'm going to get some of these T-shirts. Maybe this can encourage them. If you want to go to bed with a T-shirt, the morning after intimacy. <laughs> You go ahead on it. I'm gonna remind you. Yeah, we're right. gonna, I'm gonna remind you. And that. you put some pink snatches under that. Yeah. You get out the bed before he get out and hurt and get you a sea moss bed, <laughs> right? Because mm-hmm. they're gonna clean the cat up. I'm not lying. Sea moss. Sea moss bed. Oh, okay. And, and, and look, I, that's what I do. And I'm gonna. T- you would not have a smell. Good. And I'm trying to tell them, get yourself together. They be like, Riri, how you been married long? Because I'm smart. <laughs> You know, you got to do these things. Role play. This is what I do with him. Go ahead. Show me. Show me what you do. I'll come in the house. You know, like, he'll be sitting in his favorite chair, right? Yeah. Da, na, 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 na. <laughs> da, na, 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 na. Then I, I have a big butt, y'all. So I go. <laughs> Put it right in his face. Yeah. And look, he be trying to act like he watching TV. Uh, then I start shaking. <laughs> Next thing I know, he in the back. <laughs> He ain't watch that. He ain't watch TV no more. I hear, I hear him set the alarm. Dum 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 dum. When he set that alarm, he know it's on. Yeah, you know. Then, and then I had the audacity because they was like, "Baby, we want to see your robes. If y'all not gonna buy my robes and use them, leave them in my house. <laughs> you put that silk robe on." And then you put a pair of snatches under. If he snatch them all, so what? Let him take that robe. Whoop. <laughs> They don't listen. He said, he said they call snatches. Oh, they, I have the booty snatches. The booty snatches. The booty snatches got all the butt out. <laughs> the lace in the front. Mm-hmm. And if you got a rump, oh, that man going to really like that. Mm-hmm. The coochie snatches got the coochie out. <laughs> right? It's so easy access for that man to put that penis straight in. And, there it is. And there it is. is. He ain't got to move it to the side. To all, and then if he want to finger you, yeah. he don't have to be pulling everything down to finger you. But if you come to bed with welfare clothes, how are you going to finger you? Teach. Do you Teach. know? And then the robe. You know what I love about my silk Hold on. Flesh and blood can reveal this to y'all. Me. Y'all better receive this Bible study. This is Bible study right here. She's teaching right now in Sunday school. Keep Sunday, teaching. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. Sunday school. Yeah, Sunday school. And I tell them, they say, Marie, why? you be wearing them silk robes if you're not gonna purchase them robes and wear them don't purchase it because the silk robe got you know it get easy access to the doves this man can suck breast so good only mine though <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you start from my neck all the way down yeah. here yeah. and I tell you I'll be like oh yeah, we're getting happy right now look at him getting happy over there I'll be like oh. <laughs> I'll be saying oh See, that feels so good. <laughs> and then you know what else I love? If you, like, I still suffer with endometriosis, so I get the vagina massage. All right, all yeah. right. And you go straight through the snatches, just massage. See, they got to learn these things. I'm telling y'all, keep your man. So hold on. So who taught you this, though? Nobody but the Lord. <laughs> he had to put it in. Because <laughs> my mother was nothing like no. this. Uh, 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 my mama read the Bible and don't want to have sex. I'm like, my dear, you can't do that. You're married. But think about that. But see, you see, you see how we were trained so improperly in the church. Mm-hmm. It's like sex was so demonized that, yeah, yeah. that it was never supposed mm-hmm, to be. That's mm-hmm, the reason why I wanted mm-hmm. y'all on the podcast so y'all can give a healthy perspective of what sex is supposed to be. You get these married couples that mm-hmm. don't want to have sex. Oh, 
no, and then they no. wonder why they're so divided. Well, you haven't yeah. been connected through right, sex. God right. created that for Thank a reason. You. And you like, well, I just, I mean, but I'm mad at him, so I ain't finna be. Mad. I can't, I can't have sex with somebody I'm mad at. Mm-hmm. Now, look, when you have your mad days, now see them the good days. <laughs> If you have a little misunderstanding and stuff, because one thing about my man, he's still going, he's still getting it. He's going to still get it. But he not, he, I mean, he's not an argumentative man. He, he, he a man of peace, honestly. So I would be feeling bad, really. You done messed up again, bad girl, really. Mm. I say, oh, Lord, help me. And you know, <laughs> and then I just go in the room and he see how I be. It's all forgiven. <laughs> it is all forgiven yes. but I don't hang around with women you know and I hate to say it but I'm going to tell the truth tell, about tell it the truth. like I don't hang out with women who always at a battle with their man you understand what I'm saying mm-hmm. because see you ain't going to bring that spirit over here Teach. That's right. see what I'm saying That's right. Teach. Like, That's girl, right. but you know he look I don't want to hear it because Teach. if you're right. not going to listen to what I'm telling you, right. don't tell me nothing. I'm right. not in a battle. I'm in love. Right. right. That's see right. See what I'm saying? That's right. And like I told her, I said, I see why you're not getting nothing and why you're grouchy. That man right. ain't got time for you because you want to keep coming to bed, acting a clown. You want to, you know, you want to do silly things. And then you want to look at him. All a man say is, can you just put on, let me tell you, just say, can you, can you wear some snatchers? Well, I don't need to put on that. I said, what would you doing? I say, and you wonder why you're not getting gifts. I say, well, I'm still getting gifts. <laughs> I say, I don't have to ask for a thing. Later. Look, I don't have to ask for a thing. Because you know, but you're not doing it right. Then she said, well, Marie, what, what, what you do? I said, you better look at them videos. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Seriously, they be asking me stuff, you know, and I don't allow myself and I don't align myself with women like that. I really, I'm telling y'all, I don't. Because there are women that, you know, I used to be, oh, Lord Jesus, in relation with, they won't cheat. I ain't got time for that. Yep. You know, yep. we used to honestly, like, um, I had a 25th year anniversary, right? So they was like, she gave me a lingerie party. I said, do not bring pots, paints, dishes, nothing here that, of, of a kitchen. Painless, <laughs> painless lingerie. Oh, they bought me some bad lingerie and mm-hmm. stuff. I bought myself some. My man bought me some. So it was all the church people, right? <laughs> <laughs> At our house, right? Older and younger. Mm. And baby, guess what? I came out there with my pajamas on. I had all kind of lingerie. I was showing them. Oh, the next day they was heated. They was happy. <laughs> Even the old ladies. They was, and it was like, they never, you know, they, they feel like once they start reading their Bibles, they got to be virgins. There I'm is. like, you put that Bible mm-hmm. down. <laughs> <laughs> put that Bible up and let that man do what he do. You better read right. some Song right. of Solomon they, up in here. But right. no, they don't want to read Song of Solomon. They're yeah. like, you know, I, I'm serious. I had a lady to say this to me in a group. She said to all of the women in the group, she said, ladies, if your husband want to have sex with you, don't let him have sex with you a lot. I say, who are you talking to? I I asked that girl. I said, "Who That's the are dumbest you?" Thing in the Nobody world. answered. Mm-hmm. All the rest of the women. Oh yes, yeah, sister. Like, girl, please. You know. <laughs> and I said, "Who are you talking to?" <laughs> I said, "If my man want me twenty four hours a day, he getting it." Mm-hmm. And so she said, "I said, girl, are you getting some?" She was getting some on the slick. Was, I said, "Girl, are you?" No, she was getting it on the slick though. Yeah, I said, "Girl, right. are you married?" I said, "I see why, but you giving it away on free." <laughs> In the church, I told her that. I ain't here. And all the rest of them looking like, now, you know, Rita didn't have to say that. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I had to tell her that because you know what? You're around here sneaking and getting penis and you don't want me to get none. Girl, you must be out your mind. I'm getting mine. Yeah, she, I mean, she, I mean, this, they say, this is who going to be y'all teacher today. I say, and teach you. Rita, what you you say? You say you said she's sneaking getting penis. Oh, she was getting that penis, Mm -hmm. but she was getting it on the slick. And guess she was getting it in a church with the church men. Mm-hmm. On a slick, and then she want to be around here with the Bible. I wanted to take that Bible and whoop. I knew, I knew what she was doing, and then you know what gets me? They talk all that stuff, and then they constantly looking at your man. I said, "No, you want that, huh?" <laughs> but you're not getting none. Yeah, yeah. Read it, read it. You, you done called the lady out in church? Oh yes, I did. In the church meeting. <laughs> Don't play with me. I'm t- I'm that person. Don't come talking about you prophesying. You proper lying. I don't play that. Mm-hmm. I don't play that. I'm telling you, no. Well, what have you heard people? <laughs> what kind of <laughs> <laughs> it is what, what it kind, is. What kind of false prophecies have you heard? Has there been anybody prophesied on you? Oh, many a time. What they say? <laughs> well, one day they called me a Jezebel. <laughs> Why they call you a Jezebel? You got one man. 
you know, like I'm, con- I'm not controlling. It. I'm just out with it. Mm-hmm. I just tell you the truth, and then if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, well, I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. But you gonna know the truth before you leave. You see what right, I'm saying? Right, and the right. thing about it, they want see. They wonder why I'm always smiling and stuff, and they be everything got to be so churchy with them. <laughs> And I'm like, y'all not gonna do this to me. I had got to the point I started sitting outside in the in the little um like they had a nice little place to sit. I said, let me go in there. I said, cause if I go in there, I hurt somebody. <laughs> I already knew what I was going to. I said, cause if you come for me, yeah, they, like they tried to come for me one time. Well, sister, you wasn't there at church. I said, I sure wasn't. <laughs> well, where were you at my home with my children? Where you need to be at? Now it's okay that at my main go. You know, because that's that's fine. We 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 talk to each other, you know, but don't come asking me, you know, telling me no stuff like I can't be with my man or where I'm at. You ain't gonna define who I am never. You never gonna define who I so am. So the lady prophesied and said you was a Jezebel, yeah, Jezebel yeah, she spirit. Did, mm-hmm. She did. She said in front of people. Oh yeah. It she, was out loud. She said She said I'm controlling. She said you have a Jezebel spirit she said, you I have control. A Jezebel spirit. I said, now girl, you don't even know what that is. <laughs> you trying to tell me what it is. I, I was so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and look, this is the crazy thing. Like, see, when they see me today, oh my God, they saying, oh, she is just a devil. <laughs> like, I knew something was wrong with this girl, but something is really wrong. I, the people, they stay far away from me. So, wow. So, what did they see? I, I want to know, what I'm did they serious, see? So, like, they just very, very religious. Like, what's, what's up with them? Because I love me, your personality. It's like a mental state. Like, they're mental to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally yeah, mental because yeah. you have a husband. And he's not looking happy. I saw, right. I saw what, two couples. It was two or three. And they like, hey, Rita. But you could tell they ain't like me. Because <laughs> they already know what's going on. Oh, we don't like the internet. I said, that's your problem. Oh, uh, because they keep seeing you going viral and stuff. They don't like the things I do because they feel like you're a Christian. I am. But I love sex. And I'm going to have sex. Mm-hmm. I am not going to have this big, fine, sexy man. My man is so slim, fine. I love this. This man got the most wonderful body. So you think I'm going to just lay in a bed with me and I'm not going to be touching him all over and stuff? <laughs> so they look at me and be like, girl, you like that? Yes, I am. Y'all already know I'm like that. But now they just scorn me like, and I'm saying, <laughs> they don't like me though. They don't like me. Like they say, she just taking that man down. I am. <laughs> they do not like me. I am the scorn for real. They don't like me. Theo, you ain't mad, are you? Well, no. I'm not mad. <laughs> Blink twice if you need help. <laughs> don't like me. The men don't like me either. Why? But they got problems. See, the men don't like me because they feel like I'm exposing them. Oh, about what they don't do for their right. woman because you, you talk know, about how great, right. great Theo is been so caring for you. So now when they see me, they like, and I'm like, to you too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Oh, they don't like me now. They don't like me. They, they say some things, boy. I tell you, I'll be like, whatever. <laughs> tell, me what, tell me what they say. Oh, you just want attention. You a pick me. I say, you're right. I am. <laughs> I say, because he's picking chose me. Now, the, your definition of pick me don't matter to me. Yeah. <laughs> I tell him, you know, or oh, you just control and you got that man him pick. I say, because he want me. That's, That's what's so crazy. <laughs> they act like y'all single. Y'all are married. married. What right. is married right. supposed to look right. like? That's I want right. to be the weakest man to my Please. wife. Right. I want my wife to be like, I got him. He loves oh, me what? like crazy. Right. Right. I don't want to sit in there like, I don't know how he feels about right. me. Right. I'm doing a bad right. job as a husband if, if I'm making you question my love for you. Right. I want people to say, she got him whipped. Mm-hmm. I want people mm-hmm. to say, uh, 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 he got her sprung. It, it better be that. Right. Yeah. Look, right. when we go out this is so funny y'all when we go out to eat like we go on these little spontaneous dates and stuff and I like short dresses I be switching down cause you know <laughs> cause I'm a big butt right and he just be watching ooh honey you so fine I say what you so, he said you, you so fine I say wait till we get home so, like we'll go sit down somewhere we'll get a boot Cause yeah. I know this man want to feel on my butt. Yeah. You think I'm going to wait till I get home from the field? Teach. And then one day we get in the truck and he said, after we ate and everything, he said, honey, let me see your penis. I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I heard him scoop all the He said, who? Because he bought him. He could see him all day long, right? Oh, God. So he was like, oh, yeah. I said, hmm. When he, when he looking like that, devious look, I know what that means. <laughs> Right now, 
I am the most scorned person. Yeah. But I love it. Yeah. I love it. I really do. And this is so crazy. So, Theo, what would you speak on that? Wow. When you hear your wife talk about this, about how people make it seem like y'all's affection and love for each other is a bad thing. Speak on that. What, what What's yeah. up with that? Well, the way I look at it, you know, the Bible talks about everything God created is good. Yeah. He created yeah. for his purpose. You know, so to me, yeah. sex is not a bad word. Yeah. You know, if it's done properly. Right. It's not a bad word, you know. So a lot of time people get, like she said, they get married. Mm. Sex is no more into to play no more. Right. So, but, you know, we just try to keep the fire burning. You better <laughs> come out there like Zeno or... <laughs> <laughs> or they better come out there like hey, I'm, ah, you know stuff like that the other one I like I like that I am what I told you I, his diamond princess mm-hmm. then I say I'm a diamond queen honey you know I mean you tell me that's what they say to you that's what I tell my man oh, okay. like, oh them, these people don't like me they don't like it mm mm for so you just talking about the church folks because the people on the on the internet or oh, the church folks don't they love like you. you no they don't they yeah. absolutely love you y'all are hashtag relationship goals hashtag marriage goals hashtag when I get old I wanna <laughs> I want what they got God I see what you do for others what I'm waiting for what you do for me all that good stuff mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. um, that's what's so interesting it's just crazy because I never would have thought that y'all. In the body of Christ, y'all would get demonized because y'all have a happy, <laughs> thriving marriage. Oh, yeah, they demonize me. Oh, they really don't like me because they like, you know, when they see me coming, it's like the devil. <laughs> They're like, like, I'm the devil or something. I'm like, you know what I said? I said, they're not getting nothing. Ain't nothing going on in the building. <laughs> they angry? They look like I told them, I said, and y'all need to get a chandelier. I <laughs> tell, said, tell, tell people yeah. about the chandelier. What's the oh, chandelier? Okay, see the chandelier. I had wanted the chandelier. So he put a chandelier over. Heck, somebody else stole it. Right? So I used the poles to the back of the bed, the front part, not this part, because I ain't going to go fall over. So the chandelier just right there, right? Just get up on that chandelier, and then all this fine body just <laughs> take that real quick. <laughs> Them snatches, woo, you know? So <laughs> you know, that chandelier, you can see everything. Mm-hmm. You Everything there is to see. Look so, at him. He always rubbing on your arm yeah, now. Look at him. He always look be at- doing it. <laughs> I told him, I said, if you can't get a good one, just go to the antique store. I don't care where you get it. Get your chandelier. My daughter got one. <laughs> <laughs> look at you. Always that. <laughs> yeah, you, and they, they look at me like I'm the devil. I'm telling you, like they don't want they don't want to learn. And you know what I what I noticed? We 60, he's 64 and I'm 62, but they look like they're in their 70s because there ain't nothing going on. Mm-hmm. They just drying up. They ain't just getting no up. cardio. They ain't getting yeah. no exercise. Nothing, they ain't right. nothing no, at right. all. Right. Yeah. Just, oh, we went to church. Okay, keep going. Oh, mm-hmm. we read the Bible. We do too. Mm-hmm. We pray together. We read our Bible. We really do. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Baby, it, like they say, the heat is on, the heat be on. Mm-hmm. Have you ever done marriage conferences? We have. Oh, mm-hmm. Lord, we have. And I tell you. <laughs> Why you got to do that? You don't like that experience? No, because people don't be real. Yep. I don't yep. like that. You know, if you invite me somewhere, <laughs> I'm going to tell you like it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you don't want me there. If you, because you know who I am, please don't invite me, because right. I'm gonna tell you the God honest truth. <laughs> so when they go, they be like, they got, they got their little agenda. They got none but scriptures and so I believe in the word of God. I love God. Amen. I love His word. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what got me thus far. Right. 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 And then they like, you know, uh, well, you know, sis, we're not gonna talk too much about that. Who you talking to? Hmm. You know, I say, I tell you what, this the last. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't not nice though. I'd be horrible. I say, this the last. I tell them yeah. like it is because y'all trying to act like I'm the devil. Yes. Like, here come the devil. Well, don't invite me. Mm-hmm. Do mm-hmm. not invite me and expect me to just sit down or I can't touch him. I might go touch his crouch or something. <laughs> this my man. Right. If I feel like touching it, I'm going to touch it. I don't mm-hmm. care. You know, his butt or something. And I do this every night now, babe. No, no lie. Ooh, this man body is so fine, especially his butt, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got to rub it like it puts me to sleep. It's like therapy. <laughs> I be telling him, I say, ooh, baby, Rita, you so said it's like therapy. It <laughs> is. It's like therapy. It's soothing like, and relaxing. Bad girl, we be like this. I say, I'm bad girl, we be, ooh, your butt is so fine. <laughs> and I be like this. 
This man's skin is so soft. I said, ooh, B, you so fine. I be everywhere all over this man. I'm telling mm-hmm. you the truth. And that's how it should be. It mm-hmm. should be. Mm-hmm. It should be. We need to normalize mm-hmm. love and yes, affection. We need be. to normalize that. It's crazy that, and I guarantee you, watch you see, because the, the people who watch my podcast, they're more enlightened. They not on no religiosity stuff, type huh? stuff. No. Mm-hmm. So you finna, you going to have people sitting up there hitting y'all up talking about we need y'all at our conference. We have a mm-hmm. marriage conference. We need y'all give us all the smoke. Mm-hmm. You know, my pastor, Pastor Evan Connor, he 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 for all that. You know what I'm saying? He'll mm-hmm. be like, "Y'all come on. Come on and talk." Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And let y'all do what y'all do. Mm-hmm. Uh because that's that's important because that's right. what that's we find right. is right. that he he did a, right. a, a series one time where he talked about he was telling single people, "Stop having sex." And he he said, Mary folks, start having more yes. sex. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And he did that during wow. our relationship month. He said, Mary folks, have more sex. Yeah. Single people, stop having sex. Yeah. <laughs> and that's so, the reality. Yeah. It's amazing. Because the crazy thing about it is that you, you see why infidelity is so rampant even in the body that's of Christ. It. That's mm-hmm. it. Because God, you're not having don't. these conversations. It's not, it's not like saying like to for you to be, for people to frown upon you in your church setting because you're saying, hey, let your marriage be thriving sexually. Mm. Right. That is that is by far the craziest thing I've heard in my life. Mm. Mm. Like you doing something wrong. It'd be different if you were some wayward woman. You over here exactly. messing around with all these de- de- deacons in the church. Right. You messing around with right. these folks, mess with these folks. And they say, you need to sit your little fast tail down somewhere. Exactly. Right. You talking about my husband. Right. I enjoy Making love to my husband, oh, yeah. and I'm That's not right. ashamed about it. I'm That's gonna make right. a video about it. That's he talk right. about messing up my hair, and then he gonna redo my hair. We gonna we gonna show what this really looks like in the body of Christ. Right. And then they look at you like you 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 Jezebel. Oh, they mm-hmm. got upset when I told them this one. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. One night I told them I said we was we were about to get into we were about to get down in our bed, <laughs> and I said ooh I got a fetish. He said what? I said I just want to go in the back of the truck. We got this big huge truck, right? I said I just want to go back that naked. I want to have sex right back there. Oh boy, he went put that key in the ignition, put that air conditioner on. You should have saw us going through our back door. He said, What if our neighbors see? I said, I don't care who see. I said, We married. Right. I and I like that. As long as I got my little pillow, I mean, oh, we had a blast. Yeah. <laughs> she said, As long as I had my pillow. <laughs> We had a blast, but we came out here just sticking up everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at him talking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have this, this gate all the way around our house, right? And we keep it locked, right? And yeah. I mean, that night was just so romantic. Oh, mm-hmm. and baby, the truck was like, if I could tell in the winter suit, <laughs> you better not talk. <laughs> I, I, that's what we do, though. Right. That's right, what we do. Right. And so, what does that mean to you, Theo, to have a woman that's spontaneous like that? A woman it, that's... It's great for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when she said that, we we was getting Ooh, it on that night. Move? And she said, well, let's go get in the truck. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, you know, I'm more mature now. You know, when I was young, I would do that. But... I'm saying, like, what if the police pass? Then I say, oh, I know people. what I'm going to say. I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Ooh. You know? Well, we had a blast. I'm telling you the truth. But it, it, it was fun because, you know, sex could be fun, too. Yeah. Right. Because here we trying to get our... We older, so we trying to get in this truck. Yeah, yeah. That's trying so to find a it. white position. But Back it's hurt legs. Yeah, yeah. Baby, toot your booty this way. Oh, should I do it this way in a truck? And we be, cracking no, up. This, I said, "Be just like this." <laughs> <laughs> and we were just laughing down, but we had a good time that night. Oh, don't talk about when we go in the spontaneous um hotel. What? Mm. I don't know how to act. Lights all come on the mirror and spray this bed up. <laughs> Pillars and everything. I bring pillowcases, right? I bring our own love You bring your own pillowcases? One, yeah. and then I leave them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I, I, I bring nice pillowcases. I have a nice You bring rent. your own bed in. Oh, mm-hmm. I do. And then leave it there. Top sheet and everything. Because mm-hmm. I know when we when we start, we gonna, it's going to be on. <laughs> I remember one night, we started around like 9 o'clock that night. We didn't finish till 2 in the morning. <laughs> I'm not lying. I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. We had said a whole week. Remember this thing? Mm-hmm. A whole week. And I was like, well... I'm hurting all them some, you know, healthy stuff that come in the house. So he was like, I ain't worrying about eating. I say, wait, what? I'm so glad because I don't, you know, I don't like to cook. Mm-hmm. I don't want nothing dirty. I want to get 
<laughs> like I want everything to stay clean, right? Oh boy, I tell you that man got home. He said, hey, hey, look, I'm sending this man all these nasty pictures of me. <laughs> <laughs> if them bones can talk, look, if them bones look, can talk. But, see, he had took me some pictures all stooped over and all this stuff. So I'm sending it back to him. And he like, I can't wait. I said, me either. So, so look, when he got home, look, he was running in his bedroom to get his bed and stuff. And I was already in the bed. I'm in here, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so we had like a whole week. <laughs> we would start like eight, nine o'clock in that kitchen. Oh, I would be finished by yeah. two, three in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So as is a lot of people we look at this, especially a lot of young people, they'd be like, why haven't y'all just got tired of the same old, same old for all these years? Mm-hmm. It's, we didn't get tired. No, we still it, I'm going to tell you something. You're more mature now. Mm-hmm, it should get mm-hmm. better and better. That's right, B. And hotter and hotter. All right, B. Because we mature now. Right. You know, I know what's going to please her, what it's going to take. So you, you know your woman, she know her man. Hmm. But what about the ones that say, it's the same vagina, it's the same penis. No, Why no, would you just, no. you want to try something else. No, y'all some freaks, no. why don't y'all bring some other people into the bedroom? No, no, no. Oh, they try now. I ain't going to lie. Some no, women, they try to come through me like, mm-mm. girl, y'all be having threesomes. I said, yeah, one, two in the chandelier. That's three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you think you're going to come in here and get this fine thing, you, you, you talking to the wrong mm. person. You walking up the wrong street. <laughs> And they didn't want to say you're not Christians. My man is an ordained pastor. He really you, you, you got you got to switch it up. You got to do things different. You know, it's not always at the house. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You got to move around. Move you know. Around. You know. Go to hotel. You know yes. when you when you when you when you dated, you took her to a hotel. Yeah. He didn't take me to none. We didn't do all you, that you know? back then. But you still you still keep these things we moving. Got to. You know. We got still to. keep them moving. Got to. You know. You said we all day, y'all, y'all go there. No, cause ask him. I wasn't yeah. that type girl. When yeah. we did that one time, that's when we got that little boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one time experiment for real. That was the ask him. That was the one and only time. That was it. That was it. Mm-hmm. And then we got married. That little boy was two months old, and we've been do- doing <laughs> it ever since until I had got sick, and I still mm-hmm. was trying to get something in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he said we got that little boy. <laughs> yeah, well, that little boy, something so disgusting. He's forty three now. Oh Lord, have mercy. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that little boy so. <laughs> 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 you know, oh, but you know how you have your first kid. Oh, that little boy is so disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say? So your 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 sons. What do they say about you? You know their dad mm-hmm. being that open and you know seeing that because I know they probably saw you. You know as they were growing up, grabbing mama booty and doing all that stuff. What do what do they say to you? Are they married? One of one, them is. One of them married. And that yeah. boy is crazy. One day he came in, the door was shut. I don't know how he got inside that day. We used to leave our doors locked. And if you come on the premises, I'm calling the police. <laughs> on your <laughs> kids? So, on your kids? Yeah, I'm calling the police. <laughs> so he came in out the middle, left the back door unlocked, and our door was locked. He hit that door so hard and ran, trying to disturb <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> and he lived totally like three houses away, one, two, three houses from us, like four houses, right? <laughs> so um he's so a lot of, he know a lot of people. So they were sending him um the videos, right? Yeah. Because he know a lot, a lot of people. Like so they sending my son the videos. Okay. He said, Lord Jesus, look at mama. <laughs> 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 so when he told me about it, I said, You getting some, huh? <laughs> you ain't gonna tell me what to do. <laughs> and so, and so, they've seen a healthy, thriving marriage. You think that helps shape them in their decision uh, making process on who they decide to date? Well, I don't know because the blue boy is crazy. Mm-hmm. He have a good wife, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful one. But oh Lord Jesus! Would Great you say God. he crazy? He is. My son is a lot like me. Okay. And he he's so outspoken. I'm telling this boy is outspoken. And when he sees certain, he'll say. Mom, you're giving people all this false hope. I say, false hope? What you talking about? <laughs> he said, Mama, these women not like you. They ain't going to do what you did. <laughs> you know, he, you know he, do, he come at me like, Mama, see, you keep saying stuff, and you just trying to help people. Leave them women alone. I said, but this is my life. This is how I live. He said, you heard what you said. That's how you live. Mm-hmm. And then my other son, he be like, I can't take it because people say things in the comments to you, and I don't like it. I say, leave them people alone. I say, everybody have a right to their opinion, you know? He said, but people feel like y'all too old. I don't care what people feel Facts. like. I say, son, I am not defined by people and never will be. Teach. You know, mm-hmm. and that's Teach. how I feel. That's why a, a lot of women in church don't like me because I am not defined by what you think I should be. Teach. You think I should walk around? Who this for? This is how they want me. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Sister Rita, know I'm bad, girl, we read 504. <laughs> Holding their Bibles and stuff. 
with their grandchildren. I love my grandchildren to pieces, but they know grandma going to get it on. That's on, <laughs> That's on the people. Wait, 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 what did the 13-year-old say to you? Oh, my God, my poor baby. She was so embarrassed. She said, Grandma, I say what? You talking about coochie snatches and booty snatches? I said you just better not let me catch you with nothing. She was so see, I had her since she was four. So you know, like that's my baby, and like I put my baby to bed and stuff. I said because me and Grandpa, we finna go and spend our, you know, have our good time. She said, Grandma, I said we finna go have a good time. All right. <laughs> so then when they saw the videos, oh my baby was so hurt because she felt like I was a Christian and I shouldn't come out like that. I said, Zah, this is my man. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and then oh lord, my oldest one is seventeen. She was so embarrassed. Oh my god, she said, "Grandma, I'm just embarrassed in front of everybody. All my friends, everybody mm-hmm. send me stuff about you." I said, "Well, why did you tell them your, I'm your grandmother?" She said, "They asked." I said, "Well, you didn't have to tell them." Mm-hmm. Now my <laughs> my son, little boy, he's twelve. That's my baby. My baby said, uh, "Grandma." The rap was following you. That's how he was. He said, Grandma, everybody know you. Even my teachers be talking about them snatches, them booty snatches, them coochie snatches. I said, well, tell them if they want some, hit me up. And I'll bring it to the next parent-teacher conference. Yeah, he said, for real, I'll be waiting for him. Here you go. And the they next PTA help you out. meeting. The next PTA See, meeting. He, you have a little he, table out he there. He love it, though, because I think he liked the publicity. Yeah. Yeah, he do. Mm-hmm. Like, he come by me, and he want his friends. To say, I said, don't nobody look in our house and stuff, boy. That's how I tell I said, don't tell nobody where we live at. I ain't got time for all that. I only have company. And Theo, you more of the shy one. So what did you think when you started, you know, you seeing your wife making these videos with you and you popping up in the camera and all that type of stuff? What did you think when people started recognizing you? <laughs> well, I was just, I really, I just let her be her. Yeah. You know, I mean, let her be her natural self. Oh. I don't try to, you know, take nothing away from her, you know. What do you think when you start seeing millions of people seeing y'all? Did that be like really? It, it it don't even bother me. I mean, it's just <laughs> I go about my normal life, doing what I want to do, you know. And I'm not too impressed. I mean, because this is who she is, you know. This you just used to it. Yeah, I'm it. used to it. So I mean, you know, I'm not embarrassed about it. This is what I've been dealing with for all my life. So I mean, <laughs> you know, I just I just like that she's authentic. She yeah, keep it real. She tell you like it is, you know, and hey, it Did is. Did you ever think she is. was too much at any point when you, when she was younger? Did you be like, oh girl, this girl got a mouth on? No, she just... not really. No, that's was one of the things I loved about her. Yeah. You know, you yeah. know. I don't know how you kept mm-hmm. me though. I ain't gonna lie, because mm-hmm. boy, 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 I'd be like, you know, like sometimes he'll say, "Now, nah, honey, you gotta <laughs> calm down," you know, like because people come for me though, <laughs> and he'll say, "Now, nah, honey, what would Christ do?" I say, "I'm not Christ." I said, look, I said, I'm not Christ. I'm not putting up with it. You know, he said, but honey, you have to have self-control. I said, another day. <laughs> another day. Another time. Because they always, I'm telling y'all, I don't deal with nobody. They always coming for you. My family, my grandkids, my children, you know. And they always coming for me. Mm-hmm. It's like if I go out the door, it's a problem. I ain't watching your man because I don't want them. You know, Mm -hmm. so they feel like she shouldn't come out with a robe. Yes, I am. Yes, Mm -hmm. I am. Because I'm enticing you to get you something and make your marriage work. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying how long you've been married. Because it looks like (laughs) you're single to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? See, that's what gets you in trouble right there, Riri. You just said it. You say you look like you're single. They look like they're single. So when I come out like, here she come with another robe. And here I am. And I'm serious. We talking about you. So you, you go, you go. You walk around with a robe on? Do I? From her house to mine. I have so many silk robes. Nice robes. I love Oh, you talking down the street? You ain't going to the grocery store with a robe on? Well, I wear my pajamas to the... Should I tell him? I have been there. <laughs> <laughs> you go Look, what kind of pajamas? I wear a whole pajama set with a robe. I don't care. I don't like to dress up. I love lingerie. That's my life, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't care if they look. You, what you going to do? Mm-hmm. I went, he bought me like these really nice pajamas. You would never know. Nice handbag and stuff, and I'm gone. And I don't care who like it. So it's the most clothes you had on in a long time? What you got on today? Well, <laughs> only when I come on stuff like this, but I, I really don't like dressing up. I'm trying mm-hmm. to learn because he he loves style. Like yeah. this man get everything made. Yeah. You know, I don't have time for that. That's just too tedious for me. So go ahead and give me them pajamas. I'll take them. <laughs> Give me no silk one. That's what I told him. I said, look, five-way anniversary, please don't buy me no jewelry. Just give me some pajamas. 
So what were you doing before social media, before y'all started taking off as social media? Your kids grown out the house. What have you been doing on your own, you know, just at home? What were you doing? Well, you know, I helped to create a business with this man. We okay. have a landscaping company, right? So I was doing that. I still do, but I don't do as much of it as I used to. I don't go cut no grass now and all that in landscape. I would just go to the jobs. Right? Yeah. And um, being a mom, you know, a wife, a mom, and a grandmother, but see now, who? Mm -hmm. Beggar, we, I've always been this person, but I've always tried to help everybody, you know, like, but I'm to the point in my life, I just want to enjoy my life with my man even more, you know, because I feel like I paid my dues. You did. You've been through, you know? you been through some stuff. So it's kids. like now, look, y'all catch me when you catch me, I'm gone. Yeah. Yes. And my, yes. like my grandkids, they know I love them to pieces. I mean, they are my hearts for real. But they know, you know, I'll say, you know, like this weekend, weekends is for us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, if my grandkids want to come and we happen to be in town, I'm going to make time for my grandkids. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm just, you know how they say I'm happy with Jesus alone and this man? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then me and this little girl, we be, be run. me and this little girl will run the streets. Uh, that's your buddy right there? Yeah, that's That's your road dog. That's it. <laughs> Lil, Lil, Lil 504 right there. <laughs> Lil, Lil 504. 504. <laughs> and, and that's what we do. We go to the salon. I don't know how many times after we, we, you know, we, <laughs> you know, I like my strawberry refreshers, you know, <laughs> but now I, 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 I go, but I, I have to hide all the time, you know, because people recognize you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just with their cameras and I'm nice yet, but I told him, I said, look, I'm in here to shop. I, I don't want to be bothering. <laughs> and they understand. Some people understand, you know, mm -hmm. Theo, that's what I was doing though. Theo, I want you to look towards that camera right there. And I want mm -hmm. you to give <laughs> men advice on whatever God lays in your heart. I want you to just share about 30 seconds to a minute of <laughs> advice that you would give to men, whatever you would like to say. Well, I think one of one of the main things I think, you know, I never have a, had a problem with too much of my wife submitting to me. Like some men, you know, they high on submit to me. You know, I don't get into all that. I don't worry about no trying to be a dictator. Like you know, I'm the man, and mm -mm. you know, no, I believe in that. You got to demonstrate to the woman. You know, you see where we was even it's. A lot of the things in your in your marriage, people say, "Well, what's the secret?" It really is no secret. Come on, Most man. of the stuff is in your marriage vows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. You just got to take that. When you take that vow, first of all, you take it before God. Number one, you you promise is the covenant you made between God, and then you promise to love this woman. You know, and, and then I think there's a scripture in the Bible that say, "Love your wife as you love yourself." Mm. Yeah. And that's what I'm big on. What I want for myself, yeah. I want this for my wife. More. Good. The things I do for her, the when we go places, I'm not really worrying about all that. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, it helps our relationship. We build communication together. We mm -hmm. talk. But it's about her. We go out and eat. I'm not a big eater, you know, because I don't really eat meat that much, but you know, fish or something like that. So I'm not a big eater. So whatever you want to get. I try to make her feel as relaxed, as comfortable. Most of the times, I order her food. You know, people think I'm, I'm trying to be overboard because I'm ordering for her. Mm -hmm. When we go somewhere, I want her to be relaxed. She at home all the time. Be comfortable, you know, and relaxed. But the main thing is to love this woman, to give her so much love because it's not the big things in life. Mm -hmm. It's the little bit of small things. You yeah. know, people think you got to do big things. It's not always about that. Mm -hmm. It's the little bit of things we do together. Absolutely. Maybe go get an ice cream together. But the main thing is to demonstrate love to this woman. Whatever you want your wife to be like, you go do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of time I go lingerie shopping. We go together. You know, she want her hair fixed. I'm, I really encourage her to go get her hair All fixed. All the time. I don't want to come on to a woman... <laughs> You know, hell, you know, all messed up and saying this my queen. You know, no, no. Go get your hair fixed. Oh, no. Go do this for yourself. You got to pamper these women. Yes. Yes. You got to cherish these women, you know. You got to love these women. As you do that, the woman going to show that back towards you. Amen. But a lot of times the men is not demonstrating that. Only in the bedroom. Oh, mm. my Lord. You know, only in the bedroom. You know, boom, 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 boom. Then yeah. nothing else after that. My Lord. No, you mm. got to continue that 
caring for your woman, you know, putting this woman on the young. Tell her how, how much you love her because 75% of divorce is because of lack of communication. Yep. Don't assume that your wife know you love her. Tell her you love her. All day long, you tell her, I love you. When I leave home, sweetheart, I love you. We kiss. Mm -hmm. Come back. I love you. Mm -hmm. You know, because you go around the world with a woman. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, this woman won't know. Do you love me? The mm -hmm. women going to ask you. Do mm -hmm. you. My wife asks me that sometimes. Mm -hmm. All that I do, but she still want to know, do you love me? And, That's what it yep. boils down yep. to. Yep. The woman yep. want to know that she is love. And when she know that she is love, She's going to have that confidence, that self-confidence that she need to demonstrate, you know. They look at this woman, no stress, no work, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Amen. Try to take as much stress as you could off of your wife. And then in return, she's going to demonstrate to you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to beg her. She's going to want her. Mm -hmm. That's the key right there. She's going to want her, you know. And that's what you have to build up on. Mm. In other words, you got to cultivate this woman. Mm. Yeah. You got to see, that's why many people lose that fire. Right. They quit the cultivation out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no more work in the marriage. It's a continuous work. Yes. Continues demonstrating to this woman. Mm. Continues showing her. Mm. Like I said, not just in the bedroom. That's going to happen, believe me. Oh, yeah. That's going to happen. Yeah. But you got to continue to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to do throughout our marriage. Mm -hmm. I never stop what I started. I just try to find different ways mm -hmm. to create that. And that's how you build an everlasting marriage, You that you cultivate that marriage. That takes work now. Mm -hmm. See, we think once we get this beautiful woman, oh, I got it. That's it. Hmm. No more. No. You got to continue what you started mm -hmm. and build up on that. Begin to nourish that woman. Begin to pamper her. It's like, you know, I do landscaping. I got a business landscaping. And like one time the Lord showed me, he demonstrated to me. He said, just as you cultivate, you prepare this ground, mm -hmm. you're getting this ground ready for what? For plants, for growth. When you see a beautiful garden, I have customers tell me, oh, they're pouring across the street. I want my yard to look like that yard. But I guarantee you that person is in that yard. Mm -hmm. They're working, making sure ain't no weeds in there. I done done landscaping jobs where you do a landscaping job, say, now you need to get this maintained. Mm -hmm. You got to get it maintained. Oh, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I done done land, they're beautiful. But then when you pass back three months later, it's worse than what it was from the beginning. Weeds and took over, plants dying, they're not watering them. You got to care for this. Everything you get, you got to maintain it. Just like you call something. Just because if you cleaned it this day, it's gonna get dirty. Yeah. So it's a steady nurturing, you know. Good. For growth, mm -hmm. you know. Good. And that's where we stop at. We quit nurturing, quit um cultivating, mm -hmm. you know. And that's 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 the key. I love it, boy. It's the thank key. you, King. Spoken from a true that's king, boy. That's <laughs> good, right there. That was, that, that was your master class, right there. Mm -hmm. um, bad girl, Riri. That's me. I want you to look to that camera. Mm -hmm. I want you to behave oh yourself God. now. I want, you behave yourself. I want you to behave yourself. Behave <laughs> yourself. I want thirty seconds to sixty seconds, oh, and I want Lord you to Jesus. talk to the young queens, whether those that are married, those that are single, and go ahead and impart wisdom. Young queens, let me just say this to y'all. I help this man through a lot. We help each other. But a lot of men are saying, y'all not doing your job as a woman. They're saying things like, you know, there's no flavor in the bedroom. And I keep telling y'all, nothing is wrong with you having your cutie cat out. Nothing is wrong with that. You need to have it out more. And I could just get you some snatches from my website. Go ahead and look at it. The Kitty Wiggle Collection, right? And love on that man. Love him. Pamper him, too. Mm -hmm. Touch that body. If his stomach too big, say, babe, you got to lose something. Mm -hmm. But don't do it that way. Rub it. Rub it. Be affectionate with that man. And put that Bible down. I need you to put that Bible down. I'm serious. I need you, too. Each day. Each day. Call that man. You know, right. I love you. I love you, babe. I love you. I love what you're doing with me. I love whatever he do. Don't knock the little things, because the little things is big to me. Mm -hmm. See, many times we knock the man. 
we knock them and we make them feel like, you know, they ain't going to do nothing else. Yeah. You know, you can't keep doing that. And you put that Bible down and stop doing that. And another thing what you do, another thing what you do, start role playing. Oh, my God. Start role playing. You could be mm -hmm. Catwoman, Xena Warrior, all them kind of people. <laughs> Just roll somebody. You could even be a cowgirl like I was for him. <laughs> do something and bring some flavor in that bedroom. And I guarantee you, Valentine's Time Day, you're going to get a gift. Because a lot of men say they're not giving out gifts for Valentine's Time Day. And I ask why. They say, because why? It's always got to be about them. I say, no. Then, then they say, you know what, Riri? They don't even want to act right. I say, what you mean? I act, what you mean? They don't want to put on nothing sexy. Okay, that's it. Sexy. What's that website? The Kitty Wiggle Collection. The Kitty Wiggle. K I T T Y W I G G L E. That's it. The Kitty Wiggle Collection. <laughs> Collection. In this, wait, www. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just said the Kitty Wiggle Girl. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Kitty, Kitty Wiggle, Wiggle Collection. Dot com. That's it. There it is. There it is. And I know you said that a lot of times you, you don't <laughs> want to do these marriage conferences or whatnot. So mm. would y'all avail yourself to do... <clears throat> Would you avail yourself to do a marriage conference where y'all can talk if they wanted y'all to keep it real? Will y'all be willing to do that with people oh, yes. coming? Oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I told you he's an ordained pastor. I know he married it. people, right? I know it. So I'm hoping to get some real weddings out of 2024. Well, there it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some hear what real you weddings. Said? <laughs> yeah. Because my man, oh, he done married some people. There and it guess is. Guess what? They're still together. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so do y'all do, do y'all offer marriage counseling? Yes, yes. we do. Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Listen, y'all know I had so much fun during this episode. I love it when I find people that are authentic, transparent, vulnerable. This is epitome of lit. You know, that's the moniker on the podcast where we say we live intentionally mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. transparent. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate what y'all have offered, the viewers and the listeners. Thank y'all for keeping it lit. Hey, y'all give it up for the Smiths, y'all. Mm -hmm. oh, Stay tuned to the end for a letter to my future wifey. Been writing these love letters to you. I'm Latarius R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys, documenting my work with the homeless, as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Did y'all enjoy this episode? Man, when I tell you, I love when I speak to the, the elderly. Well, you know, they'd probably be offended if they heard me call them the elderly because they're so vibrant and young and youthful in their spirit. But y'all know what I'm talking about. I love when I get a chance to sit at the feet of wisdom. Love it, love it, love it. I call them the gray-haired crew. But Lit Fam, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, the prospect of growing old together fills my heart with joy, especially when I think about the prospect of maintaining a vibrant and fulfilling sex life as the years unfold. I imagine us navigating the ups and downs of life, hand in hand, and our love story evolving with each passing season. The wrinkles in our skin will be a testament to the countless moments of joy, laughter, and shared experiences. Yet amid the inevitability of aging, I am confident that the flame of desire between us will only intensify. What excites me the most is the idea of discovering new layers of intimacy as we explore the intricacies of our connection over the years. Our bodies may change, but the spark that has always ignited our passion will endure. I look forward to cherishing intimate moments that transcend the physical and delve into the profound realms of emotional connection, your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. 
Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.